Today we're gonna to look at just why your soldering is garbage. That's right guys, if you've been having trouble soldering, there could be various reasons why, but there's one major reason why a lot of people struggle with soldering. Let's get into it. All right, let's get right to it. What is the number one reason why I think your soldering is garbage? Well, that has to do with heat. Here is your typical soldering iron. This thing is very small, very weak, and very cheap, but it is good for really, really small situations, really tiny electronics. It's good for stuff like that. But most of the stuff that I'm doing, I just need more heat and I need it quickly. And that's why I use a heavy duty soldering iron. And you can see this one is WL Lenk brand and it's the model WG991. I'm not sure they even make this thing anymore, but this is a very heavy duty soldering iron. It has a trigger on it and what it does is applies a lot of heat to this end, which you can swap out these ends for different shapes and whatnot. But I like using something like this because I don't have to sit there and wait for it to heat up. It heats up almost instantly and there is a ton of heat. And so the types of wires and things that I'm fixing, for example, on my vehicle, they're a little bit thicker wires. I'm joining, for example, two wires together and I want to get that connection really good. I don't want to just crimp the connection. I want to actually twist the wires together and solder them. And that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Okay, so take, for example, this speaker wire. I'm going to go ahead and rip this apart. And then I'll go ahead and strip this wire. So I now have my bare wire. I'm going to then twist these together. Now I'm going to kind of join them about a quarter of the way up. And I'm going to twist them both. Just so they're kind of like that right there. And then I'll just continue twisting one of them. So it kind of looks like that right there. And then I will continue with this other end just twisting it. And now my joint here is mechanically pretty solid. I mean, I could definitely pull this apart, but as far as the actual connection goes, this is a good connection. Electrical current will flow through here very, very easily. However, we do need to make this rock solid, and I need to do that by actually soldering the joint. And the first thing I like to do with any of my soldering joints is to apply some rosin paste flux, and uh, this is basically a way to clean that joint as you are heating it up and getting ready to flow some solder. So I'll just put a, a little bit of this on here. Okay, so we can see the application of the flux onto the joint. Now I do have eye protection on, and you definitely don't wanna be breathing any of this, but watch what happens. I'm heating up the soldering iron right now, and watch what happens as I apply that heat. There, that flux goes all through that joint and cleans it out. My heat is applied to the joint right there in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the solder to the top. Okay, you can see how it's flowing through that joint, right through that joint. And hopefully you can get a sense here just how good that joint now is. It was already a good joint by twisting those wires together, but now we have made it completely solid through and through. We have taken up all of the voids and filled them with metal. So now this joint is just as if it were theoretically just one solid wire. This isn't coming apart and that electricity will flow smoothly. We're gonna try to show the wrong way to do this. Now, the wrong way usually involves using a soldering iron that is just not powerful enough for a situation like this. You need something that has a lot of heat. I've seen a lot of people applying the solder to the tip of the soldering iron and hoping to kind of drip it onto the joint. And I'll show you what happens when you do that. Okay, I've activated my soldering iron. It's heating up and this thing gets hot quick. Now I'm gonna try to just melt it onto the tip of the soldering iron. And of course it's not wanting to go onto the joint because the joint isn't hot. Okay, I just dripped a big old chunk onto my desk here. And that was kind of a bad example of a bad example. And that's because my soldering iron actually did get that surface pretty hot. All right, I flipped it around to give you another look and you can see there's just a big ball of solder hanging off the back there. And this is exactly what you do not want. You do not want the solder just sitting on top. That literally does nothing. I could probably pick that piece of solder right off of there with my fingernail. And now here's a comparison of the joint I did earlier with plenty of heat. And you can see that solder flowed through and through. Okay, so let's say 
say you have to solder some extremely tiny wire, like for example, here we have a very small speaker terminal with some tiny little speaker wire there. Now I don't have the correct tools here. I'm using way too thick of solder. I'm gonna use way too powerful of a soldering iron. I'm gonna heat up the tip of my soldering iron and I'm gonna touch the far side of the joint here, the wire and the terminal. There, you saw how quick that was. As soon as it accepted the solder, I took it off. Let's do that again for this side here. I have the soldering iron on the far side of the joint contacting both the terminal and the wire. Hopefully you can see those two joints and there is too much solder on there, but it is still a good connection and it will work. And in this case, I would just trim off the little excess there. Okay, here's another example with some slightly thicker wires. Let's say you're wiring up some extra lighting or something in your vehicle. Put them both together and do your typical wire twist. Make sure you get them together really, really tight. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the sharp tip there. So there's our joint. That is a really nice joint. It's solid, it's compact, and you're also gonna wanna make sure you have pre-installed your heat shrink tubing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try to apply a little bit of flux on here. My flux is not in the best condition, it's pretty old. Okay, and I've preheat the soldering iron here. You can see it's smoking there, and that's because I put a little bit of solder on the tip there. I'll go ahead and apply my heat to the joint. You can see that flux just melt right in there and clean that joint. What's interesting is that copper actually becomes a little cleaner looking. And with heat on this joint, I'll go ahead and apply my solder. And you can see that solder just flowing like water, which is what you want. So this is a very good looking joint. Not only was that copper wrapped around itself to create a very solid connection, but now we have added the solder and this ain't going anywhere for a very, very long time. So we need to add some heat shrink and how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda fold this joint together, something like that, and I'll take my heat shrink and just slide it right over that joint, basically to where the bulk of the joint is kind of in the middle. We want this heat shrink to cover pretty adequately on both sides. So I'll go ahead and take my connection here and you really wanna to try to get all sides with heat shrink tubing. And there you go, there's that joint that was just twisted together and then folded over and then heat shrinked. You know, in a situation like this, if I were to be putting something like this in my car, I would definitely have two layers of heat shrink tubing because I just don't trust one single layer. It'd be probably very easy for this to fray through against a metal, you know, something in, under your dash or what have you and then have exposed wires. You know, another way I would do a joint like this is probably to do two layers. I'll do my first layer of heat shrink just right over there. Now this is our first layer and you can see this is not good enough on its own. There's exposed wire right here. So you do not want to leave anything like this. Next, I'll take a thicker piece of heat shrink and I'll slide that over so that it's adequately covering the two wires itself and the joint is about there. You can see how much I'm gonna leave here on the end. So now I'll heat this up. And then if you heat the end up, you can take something and kind of smash it down to seal it. And you can see here with that same twisted joint, we have the one layer of white heat shrink that was underneath covering the actual bare wires. And then we have the second layer of heat shrink that's covering both jacketed parts of the wire the joint itself, and then we have a little extra on the end, which I now have crimped together with that heat. And that I feel like is a pretty good protected joint right there as well. But again, ultimately the type of connection that you use is up to you. Obviously something like this is gonna be a lot cleaner, a lot easier to work with, a lot easier to apply some heat shrink tubing. I always use dual layers of heat shrink tubing. I don't wanna rely just on one single layer. All right, and there you have it. Hopefully I was able to make a good point with the heat. There are obviously many intricacies with soldering, many different methods to solder, many different types of soldering irons, many different tips that you can use on your soldering iron. 
Many different sizes of solder and types of solder. Some of them contain lead, some of them don't. And I'm not here right now to teach any of that. Really, I'm just trying to make a point about heat, that in order to get a proper soldering joint, you need to apply even heat to the joint itself. That solder should then be touched to the joint and that solder should flow into that joint. If it's not doing that and it's just being dripped on it, it's not gonna work. Hopefully I was able to demonstrate that here clear enough today with the two twisted wires together in a couple different situations. So if you think I did a good enough job, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really helps this video and the channel. And also if you've watched this far, consider subscribing. I'm Jimmy for One Road and I will see you in the next one.